Welcome, pilots! This is the first part of a series where I'll take a deep dive discussing traditional hacking exploration sites in EVE Online. In this video, I'll be reviewing all the basics of running Pirate Faction data and relic sites. This will include a thorough look at the probe scanner window, the ships and modules you'll likely be using, and the hacking minigame. If you're a new or young player, this video is definitely for you. If you haven't already, I highly recommend finding your nearest career agents and playing through the exploration career path. If you're already an experienced explorer, you'll likely be more interested in the future parts of this series. In the second and third videos, I'll be revealing my loot statistics for high security data and relic sites across all areas of space. And in the fourth video, I'll be discussing my personal tactics for navigating low security and NPC null security space as a solo explorer. Data and relic sites are cosmic signatures, which appear in space as a small diamond surrounded by red markers and spinning dashed lines. They must be scanned down with a probe launcher and scanner probes. You can see a list of cosmic signatures on your probe scanner, so long as the option is checked on the filter dropdown. Upon launching your probes, you'll want to open the Solar System map. Along the bottom of the probe scanner window, you'll find several probe formation icons. In general, you can stick with the pinpoint formation. You'll also find three icons that provide details about your current scan strength, deviation, and duration. These attributes are associated with the three Astrometrics support skills. Astrometric rangefinding is associated with scan strength, and is perhaps the most important of these attributes, as it allows you to scan down higher difficulty signatures. Astrometric pinpointing is associated with scan deviation, and plays a significant role in reducing the number of times you'll need to adjust your probes in order to pinpoint the signature's exact location. And astrometric acquisition is associated with scan duration, reducing the amount of time it takes to perform a scan, which becomes particularly important when exploring in dangerous space. On the Solar System map, cosmic signatures appear as transparent red spheres, with an X marking its center. You could move your probes directly onto the X and ensure the probe size encompasses the entire sphere. However, most cosmic signatures are within two astronomical units of a planet, so you don't usually need to be quite so precise. On my first scan, I typically just center the probes close to the nearest planet before clicking the Analyze button. Each time you run a scan, you get closer and closer to pinpointing its exact location. If it becomes a single red dot, you can reduce the probe size and center your probes directly on the dot. If it becomes a pair of red dots with a connecting line, I find that the dot furthest from your initial probe location is more likely to be near the signature's final location. If it becomes a smaller red sphere, you probably need to keep the probe size larger and center your probes on the X. Once it becomes a green icon, a Warp 2 icon appears for it on the probe scanner. Once you've scanned down all the cosmic signatures in the solar system, you'll want to recover your active probes and reload your probe launcher. Besides data and relic sites, cosmic signatures may also be wormholes, combat sites, or even gas harvesting sites. Relic sites are always related to a particular pirate faction and are named according to their solar system's security rating. Crumbling in high security, decayed in low security, or ruined in null security. There are many different types of data sites. Regular pirate faction data sites are named local, regional, or central based on the solar system's security rating. Like their relic site counterparts, they consist of hackable containers and never feature any dangerous NPCs or traps. This video series will focus primarily on the aforementioned Pirate Faction data and relic sites, but I'll quickly review the other types of data sites you can find. The second type of data site is often referred to as a ghost site, which carries the name Covert Research Facility. These sites have a timed trap, where NPCs will suddenly appear to attack you. The third type of data site is the Sleeper Cache, which features a variety of puzzles and traps. There are many more specialized data sites found outside of high security space, some only in specific regions or in wormholes. Each of these sites warrants its own dedicated video guide, which I may tackle at some point in the future. Explorers interested in data and relic sites will often find themselves flying cheap, exploration-focused frigates. 
These are ships that provide bonuses to both probe strength and analyzer virus strength. This includes the Magnet, Heron, Imicus, and Probe. Each of these ships also comes in a much more expensive Navy Issue version, which also provides significant combat bonuses. I don't actually recommend flying the Navy versions of these ships if all you're doing is running data and relic sites. There are also Tech 2 versions of these ships found in the fitting window under the group Covert Ops, which are only accessible to Omega clones. These provide extra bonuses to Probe Strength, Probe Deviation, and Analyzer Virus Strength. They also allow you to fit modules called Covert Ops Cloaking Devices, which unlike regular cloaking devices allow you to remain cloaked even while you're warping. Yet another advantage of Covert Ops ships is the ability to fit Interdiction Nullifier modules, which allow you to initiate warp even when inside a warp disruption bubble. I'll be discussing cloaking devices and Interdiction Nullifiers in much more detail in the final video of this series, where I'll cover the ins and outs of traversing Null Security and Wormhole Space as a solo explorer. Having more mid-slots to work with is helpful, giving ships like the Heron and Buzzard an advantage. The final set of ships I'll mention are the Sisters of Eve exploration ships, the Astero, a frigate, the Stratios, a cruiser, and the Nestor, a battleship. These ships provide similar bonuses as Covert Ops, though none allow you to fit interdiction nullifier modules. They also provide significant combat bonuses and deep drone bays, making them highly versatile ships. They were introduced at the same time as the sleeper cache sites, and are thus quite suitable for running them. My personal preference is to stick with the cheap Tech 1 exploration frigates in both high security and low security space. I would even argue that they're still suitable for exploring in wormholes, simply because they're so easy to replace if you do find yourself victim to capsuleers hunting for explorers. Covert Ops ships are my choice for NPC null security space. The Astero or Stratios are good choices if you plan on running combat sites in addition to data and relic sites. While the only two modules that are absolutely required to run data and relic sites are probe launchers and data or relic analyzers, there are a few others that are also quite useful. Containers in these sites can be spaced quite a ways apart, especially in more dangerous space. This makes it important to fit either an afterburner, or better yet, a micro-warp drive. It can take a little bit of practice to micromanage your velocity with a micro-warp drive, but it plays a big role in running hacking sites efficiently. It's sufficiently common for hacking containers to be completely empty, so fitting a cargo scanner will help you identify which containers you can skip. There's a long-standing disagreement about the practice of skipping empty containers in high security space, since hacking sites do not despawn until someone has attempted to hack every container in the site. The argument in favor of hacking every container is that despawning site triggers a similar site to spawn somewhere else in the same constellation or region. My counter-argument to this is that there's always another capsuleer out there without a cargo scanner, or who's looking to make sure the site will despawn. Skipping empty or low-value containers serves to slow down the more stubborn explorer. Sorry, but not sorry. If you have extra mid-slots to work with, you might consider fitting scanning upgrade modules. Unless your probe's sensor strength is already above, say, 110, a scan rangefinding array will help you scan down the highest difficulty hacking sites. If your probe's sensor strength is already sufficiently high, a scan acquisition array will help shave off a little bit of time probing down signatures. For pure exploration, I often fit nanofiber internal structure modules in the low slots. These increase your maximum velocity and reduce your align time which is particularly important if you're navigating in dangerous space. Inertial stabilizers also reduce your align time, but increase your signature radius, which allows those hunting you to obtain a target lock more quickly. Several astronautic rigs can improve your align time as well. Low friction nozzle joints have the most direct impact, while polycarbon engine housing rigs also increase your maximum velocity. There are also several scanning rigs with a more direct impact on exploration activities. The Gravity Capacitor Upgrade Rig increases the sensor strength of your probes. The Mimetic Algorithm Bank Rig increases the virus coherence of your data analyzer. And the Emission Scope Sharpener Rig increases the virus coherence of your relic analyzer. When you initiate the hack of a container, a new window opens depicting the hacking grid. On the bottom left corner of this window, you'll see your analyzer's attributes. 
Virus coherence is on the top, representing the amount of damage you can withstand before failing the hacking attempt. Virus strength is on the bottom, indicating the amount of damage you cause to defense subsystems. The grid is made up of a large number of connected nodes, and your goal is to reveal nodes until you reach the system core. As you reveal nodes, they'll change color from green to orange. Many nodes are empty, and will display a number indicating how far away you are from either a useful subsystem or the system core. Clearing away the system core completes the hack, allowing you to loot the container's contents. Note that the system core is usually, but not always, near the opposite corner of the grid from your starting location. Non-empty nodes may include other utility subsystems, which you can use to assist in the hack, or defense subsystems, which will impede your progress on the grid. Some nodes are data caches, which when revealed may be either a utility or defense subsystem. If you reach a utility subsystem, you can click on it to move it to an open utility slot. You can use a utility by clicking on it from a utility slot. The self-repair tool is the most common utility, and increases your virus coherence by a small amount over the next three turns. While the firewall is the most common defense, and has a high coherence rating, but a low strength rating. You must deal damage to defense nodes in the amount of their coherence. Each time you attack a defense node, it will in turn deal damage to your analyzer in the amount of the node's strength. Note that if your analyzer's virus strength is higher than the defense node's coherence, your analyzer won't take any damage. Antivirus nodes are similar to firewalls, but have lower coherence but a higher strength rating. The most difficult hacking containers have several additional defense subsystems that present a much greater challenge. Restoration nodes will repair other uncovered defense subsystems for as long as they remain on the grid. Virus suppressor nodes reduce your analyzer's virus strength for as long as they remain on the grid. It's usually important to clear away restoration nodes and virus suppressor nodes as soon as you've uncovered them. Thankfully, difficult hacking containers also provide additional utilities. The kernel rot utility reduces a defense subsystem's coherence by half, making it useful against firewalls or the system core. The secondary vector utility reduces the coherence of a defense subsystem over the next two turns. It's particularly useful against virus suppressor nodes. And the polymorphic shield utility protects your analyzers from two attacks. It can be used to clear away antivirus nodes. If your analyzer's coherence reaches zero, you fail the hack. You'll also fail the hack if your ship drifts away from the container beyond the analyzer's range. Training your hacking and archaeology skills up to level 5 allows you to equip Tech 2 data and relic analyzers respectively. However, there are two integrated analyzers that can still be found via blueprint copies in the game. The Ligature and Zugma integrated analyzers allow you to hack containers found in both data and relic sites. While integrated analyzers start with a much lower virus coherence, they benefit from both your archaeology and hacking skills. Once you've trained both of these skills to level 5, the Zugma Analyzer ends up with a higher virus coherence than the Tech 2 Analyzers. Besides the rather extreme cost on the market, their primary drawback is that they only have a single virus utility element slot available. This is a particular impediment to the more difficult hacking containers, but you can sometimes overcome it by leaving utilities on the grid until you actually need to use them. In the next two videos, I'll be looking at the various Pirate Faction data and relic sites. This will include my loot statistics from running the hacking sites of all five major Pirate Factions. 100 sites for each Pirate Faction and type of site, for a total of 1,000 sites in high security space. I've added a companion hacking sites guide to my website over at RileyEntertainment.com. You can also find my comprehensive set of video guides for high security combat sites covering all five major pirate factions, along with my ship fitting guides that are geared towards running combat sites. Stay tuned to Riley Entertainment and smash that like button if you enjoy my content.